In its hundred years, Las Vegas has been known as the new city of light. Entertainment capital of the world, Sin City, and Jewel of the West. These are just a few names used to describe this pleasure capital of the world. Las Vegas will always be known as a haven for high-rolling gamblers, beautiful showgirls, and top-name entertainers. Today, this fascinating city has adopted a new way to give visitors the thrill of life in the fast lane. Las Vegas is now the undisputed capital for wild rides and amazing thrills, taking their place alongside showgirls and slot machines as trademarks of the city. In the last decade, a variety of high-tech marvels have sprung up along and around the famed Vegas Strip. From a roller coaster flying 900 feet above the Strip to spinning dangerously close to the ground at 80 miles an hour. If it's spine-tingling thrills you're after, you've come to the right place. Experience the sensation of gliding through the air weightlessly. Or feel powerful G-forces as a stunt plane spins out of control with you pinned back in the passenger seat. Everything is to the max in Las Vegas, and thrill rides are no exception. Welcome to a side of the neon capital of the world that keeps the heart racing in a way that no craps table or slot machine can ever match. This is Thrill Rides Las Vegas style. Today, Las Vegas is pushing the envelope, constantly introducing bigger, faster, and more extreme thrill rides that defy gravity and leave breathless passengers begging for more. Oh, it's going to be another 25 years, I'll tell you. <laughs> America's largest indoor theme park is encased beneath five acres of glass. The Adventure Dome is a thrill seeker's delight. The philosophy behind the Adventure Dome was to bring in uh, something different, something that wasn't available up and down the strip, an indoor theme park, and nobody could imagine it. The draw for the thrill rides uh, and, and the thrill seekers, I, I think, is just uh, they can't get enough. People now, they're adrenaline addicts, and they love the thrill of doing what other people are afraid to do. It's what a gift for letting my daughter talk me into it. It's a trade-off. He comes shopping with me, and I go in these things with him. Canyon Blaster, Adventure Dome's most popular ride, goes 140 feet in the air and travels at about 55 miles per hour. Once you go over the lift, you experience about two Gs, and then when you go through the loops and around the corner, you experience a negative G-force. It does pack a punch. Yes, I've been on a lot of roller coasters, and this is one of the most intense I've ever been on. It was The inverter is one of those that if you're sitting and watching it, you'll probably talk yourself out of riding it from the get-go. Thank you, God, inverter. <laughs> it spins you counterclockwise, clockwise. You go upside down. It holds you upside down for a little while, and then you're just wanting the ride to end. It here is, is chaos. It spins vertically and horizontally. As soon as it gets vertical, the cards themselves also flip over, which uh, is twisted. You have no control. It's just non-stop action. He just screams like a girl. Oh. We have an assortment of kitty rides, a carousel, the Ferris wheel, so you can leave Las Vegas knowing that you've experienced it all. Where can you get a bird's eye view of Las Vegas and go from zero to 45 miles an hour in less than three seconds? Take a trip to the north end of the strip and head up, straight up. I'm Tien, and this is where we launched the big shot. 
Big Shot is located here at the Stratosphere Hotel in Las Vegas. We're the tallest freestanding structure here in the city. Big Shot is a thrilling ride at the top of Stratosphere, soaring 922 feet above the Strip. First time thrill seeker or seasoned veteran. I've ridden the Big Shot for 868 times. Shot can fulfill anyone's need to get high on life. I would like to go on Big Shot because of the adrenaline rush. You get all these little butterflies in your stomach, and I love that feeling, and I love speed. When people come up here, at first they look at the ride, there's a lot of excitement. They're getting scared. They don't know really what to think or what's going to happen. that propels you 160 feet in the air at 45 miles an hour in two and a half seconds. Within the first five feet, you're hitting four Gs going up. When you get up to the top, you hit at zero gravity, which makes you float in the air for a second, and then it'll drop you and bounce you back down to the pad level. It was so much fun, so much fun. Oh my gosh. No words to explain, it was just so much fun. Welcome to the hustle and bustle of the big city. No, you aren't in the Big Apple, but rather New York, Las Vegas. And beware, a taxi cab ride in this metropolis is not for the faint of heart. Well, Manhattan Express roller coaster is um, reminiscent of the days in New York, circa 1930s, 1940s. And I think having a roller coaster that would bring to mind days of Coney Island only helps enhance that. Today, this hair-raising coaster brings the excitement of Coney Island to the most electrifying city of the new millennium. That since the property opened in January of 97, Manhattan Express has had over 7 million riders. This roller coaster has become a highlight for families visiting Las Vegas. I'm Bob Tricomi, and this is my daughter, Erica. We're here to ride the Manhattan Express. <laughs> starts out with two drops. The first is 75 feet. That's just a warm-up for the second drop of 144 feet, at which time the roller coaster reaches its top speed of 67 miles an hour. Then you go into the twist and dive portion of the ride. A heartline roll is similar to a sensation felt by a fighter pilot in a jet. is responsible for the dips, dives, twists, and turns that send your heart racing? What goes into these incredible adrenaline-filled steel marvels? It might just be a little more complicated than you think. Aerodynamics is one of the leaders in the amusement industry. It, it uh, was started back in 1946, so the company is more than 50 years old now. 
one of the pioneers in the amusement industry. Aerodynamics built the first steel coaster, the first looping coaster, the first suspended coaster, the first hyper coaster, which is a coaster over 200 feet tall. Like all innovative creations, thrill rides begin with a simple vision that's transformed over time into the amazing structures we all love. A new thrill ride concept from the beginning to completion usually takes about 18 months. Usually the first few months are the initial design, planning on where the ride is going to go, how it will interface with other things that are already on the property. When Aero begins to develop a thrill ride, they often turn to director of engineering Alan Schilke, who's a master of coming up with concepts that leave thrill seekers weak in the knees. A thrill ride can be conceived many ways. Um, typically, everything that I do imitates something else. It's, it's either a motion or an action that you might find uh, in other sports or other activities. When you're going to start designing a thrill ride, the first thing you have to think of is the rider path. You're really not worried about the vehicle or how you're going to support it yet. You're really thinking about what the rider's going to feel. Once you've established that, you really you're just providing a vehicle and a, and a way to make that path possible. It sounds simple enough, but the concept is only the beginning of this wild ride. Basically, everything on a thrill ride has to be designed and analyzed as far as stress and as far as sizing all the materials so that you know this thing not only will work great the first time, but will keep working great forever. After we build the first part, we'll build a full-size prototype and test that over and over and over before we go into full production on the ride. After a thrill ride is designed, it takes about 12 months to build the ride, from building all of the cars, the track, and the structure. The typical thrill ride has about a mile of track and about 2 million pounds of structure holding it up. Then after the ride is up, before it's ever open to the public, the thrill ride is tested extensively with water bottles or sandbags. If those come back okay, then we'll put people on them. The next time you feel the adrenaline rush of a thrill ride, take a moment and think about what goes into your favorite ride. Experience the rush of skydiving without stepping foot on an airplane when Thrill Rides Las Vegas style returns. Thrill rides in Las Vegas are not just limited to roller coasters. Ever jump out of a plane? Try it indoors. Flyway indoor skydiving is a vertical wind tunnel where people are able to simulate the free fall aspect of skydiving in a controlled indoor environment. We don't actually jump from planes or fall. We do more body flight. With the proper body position, the suit, training, we're able to float, hover, and fly, simulate free fall. Flyaway for me is exciting because it gives me the opportunity to fly, and that's been my biggest dream since I was a child, looking at birds, watching them fly, and wanting to emulate what they're doing. The wind tunnel is powered by a 1,000 horsepower electric motor. Attached to that is a DC-3 airplane propeller. Combined, it can generate wind speeds up to 120 miles an hour. Free fall is about 120 miles an hour as well. The difference is our air is focused to a center column that creates an area of flight. The most exciting part is when people realize they're in the tunnel, they look down, there's no harness, no bungees, wow, I'm flying, I'm floating. Everyone's into extreme sports, we fall into that category, this is extreme fun. Other thrill rides, you sit in a chair, bar goes across your lap, off you go. With this, what you do with your body reflects how well you're going to fly. You can learn maneuvers that will also help you directly in skydiving. If I'm here to get better, to fly my body better in the air, I've got a couple of thousand skydives, and this is just a way to enhance my skydiving ability. It's cheaper than skydiving. That's a lot of fun. Don't have to pack afterwards. Flyaway is not just for experienced skydivers. Flyaway is also a favorite for first-time thrill seekers. I'm doing this because my friend recommended me to it and told me that I had to try it and I had to come, so I took her word for it. A bunch of friends told me that, that flying was the best thing you could do, you know? No, I'm kind of scared because I usually um, get sick on rides sometimes. 
I'm hoping that won't happen, but I'm expecting the best. This is what everyone's saying is hot, so this is what I want to do. For the first time jumper, you'll come in, you'll attend a brief training class. We'll teach you the fundamentals of body flight, how to hold your arms and your legs, how to fly, and most importantly, how to fall. Everybody falls. Bend your knees, you want your arms way up here, just look straight up and lean back. Your flight gear includes a jumpsuit that basically fills five sizes too big. The jumpsuit creates drag, which creates lift. It enables you to fly. Most people do have a little bit of nervousness. They hear the roar of the motor. They see the wind and the, everything blowing around. They don't know what to expect. A few seconds into it, they realize, hey, it's just a trampoline with a bunch of wind, but you're able to experience the sensation of flying. For a few minutes, you feel like Superman. You feel on top of the world because you've done something that most people in the world have never done or wouldn't even dream about doing. You're lifted up, you're floating in a room, which you can't do anywhere else. You can control yourself, do cool tricks, flips, whatever. Just kind of have fun with it. After flying at Flyaway, you're on a buzz for days. You leave here, you tell your friends about it, you're telling the person standing next to you at the bus stop what a fun time you had. Flying is incredible. I had such a blast. I was scared at first, but everything turned out really fun, and I just loosened up and relaxed, and it turned out really great, and I'm going back next week. Even when you're not actually flying, you're standing on the side, you're still concentrating. You can't even anticipate what you're going to do next. It's, it's incredible. Flyaway is the most unique experience in town. Nothing is quite as thrilling and exciting as being able to defy gravity. Las Vegas, the city of dreams, boasts it has something for everyone. Wet and Wild Water Park certainly fits that bill. Offering a heart-pounding, over-the-edge wallop, Nevada's favorite family attraction has more than a dozen ways to beat the intense desert heat while skillfully boosting your thrill ride fever. There's something here for everyone to scream about. Wet and Wild works well in Las Vegas because of the tremendous heat that we have in the valley area. Once we hit April and May, the, the temperatures will typically be in the 90s to 100s, and the people just really want to get away from the heat and the dryness and come out and relax. We came to Wet n Wild because it's hot. <laughs> we had somewhere to cool off. The favorite part of Wet n Wild for me is just experiencing the people as they're experiencing their, their enjoyable visit to the park. Young or old, wet or dry, thrill rides continue to push the outer edge of the envelope for all of us. We all like to drive fast. We all like to uh, be in high places and experience uh, different adventures throughout our life. And visiting water parks can uh, can offer you, you know, numerous thrills. Thrill rides have, have become popular just because kids enjoy the rush. Kids, kids enjoy the. The, the fear going to the edge and enjoy the, the rush of coming off of the water slide that's going straight down. I think the kids like the rides down here simply because it scares the crap out of them. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Can't even express what you're feeling. You got a whole bunch of butterflies, but you want to do it again when it's done. Scary is pretty much the way to describe one of the park's premier attractions. The most thrilling part of your stuka has got to be the speed and coupled with the uh, fact that you're not experiencing any sensation of touching the ride. You almost feel like you're just falling straight through the air in a free fall. And we've clocked people in excess of uh, 35 miles an hour up to about 40. Well, you get into the rocket, your ankles cross, your arms have your chest. I'll tell you when I'm going to drop you and I launch you, the floor comes out from underneath you. Like if you do this, you conquer the whole wet and water. <laughs> Want to be washed down a towering chute and spun around a bowl at speeds reaching a hair-raising 45 miles per hour? Then Wet n' Wild has the ultimate swirly for you. Uh, my favorite ride was the Royal Flush. 
The Royal Flush is a rather unique ride. You start up at the top of the uh, ride and you enter into a uh, closed tube. The thrill of that is the, the speed primarily when you're coming down the initial tube and then the uh, loss of your bearings when you're rolling around in the bowl. You're just spinning everywhere and you don't know what's going on. Is to me like a big toilet bowl. So for a wet walk on the wild side, slide, spin, twist, and float your way to the coolest thrill experience in Las Vegas. Las Vegas, the best place around. Experience Desperado, one of the world's tallest, fastest, and wildest roller coasters when Thrill Rides Las Vegas style returns. Las Vegas thrill rides finally reach their limit, not by a long shot. In our culture today, we're always trying to find something new and more exciting. We're not content with going as fast as our parents used to go. We're always looking for the next thrill. Thrill rides, as far as an amusement park, really are kind of matching what else is going on. All the extreme sports, all the things that people are doing, constantly pushing the envelope. The only boundary for future thrill rides is restricted by how much your body can tolerate extreme conditions. The really big advancement in thrill ride technology was going to steel rails rather than a wooden coaster. What that has allowed since then is all sorts of new twists and turns, and especially inversions that took the industry by storm and revolutionized the whole thing. There really is not a limit to how fast and how tall we can go. You know, 10 years ago, we thought we had hit the limit. When we built the Desperado at Buffalo Bills, again, we thought we were just about at the limit of how tall and how fast we can go. Desperado, a name reserved for the most dangerous of outlaws. It's a fitting title to hang on a roller coaster that serves up danger in abundance. This notorious band that takes passengers up over 200 feet and sends them on such hair-raising drops, it's almost criminal. Our roller coaster, the Desperado, is uh, one of the world's tallest, fastest roller coasters. At 209 feet high of lift height, it goes 82 to 85 miles per hour. The thing about the Desperado is it has over a mile of track length, which is very long for a roller coaster. We always have people who want to come and gamble, but we try to have a family atmosphere as well. I'm going on the roller coaster because of my grandson. Usually too many loop to loops and I can't tolerate that. coaster is not looping and cut up, but our roller coaster is more for the height than the speed. One of the important things about thrill rides that people are drawn to is fear. If I'm on and it starts to go, I want off, I want to get off, I'm all freaked out. But they feel safe, but at the same time, they're scared a little bit, people like that. Oh my god, oh my god, we're going. Yeah, that nervous feeling right when you get like to the top, you're like, oh god, and you get that And you want to get off, but you can't. relatively new phenomenon in Las Vegas, people have been seeking thrills for centuries. Today's thrill rides rise hundreds of feet in the air, hurling passengers through space at 70, 80, 90, even 100 miles per hour while standing, sitting, suspended from an overhead track, or shot into the air. These machines are created by highly skilled engineers who measure out each twist and turn to the exact millimeter. But thrill rides haven't always been quite so elaborate or quite so well thought out. The granddaddy of all thrill rides is the roller coaster. Roller coasters date back to the 1600s, when the Russians were experimenting with different types of thrill rides, sliding down hills on all sorts of sleds and wood structures. 
The first thrill ride in America was a gravity-powered mine train used to haul coal through the mountains of Pennsylvania. When the mine shut down, the railway became a full-time attraction with hundreds of people paying a nickel each for a heart-stopping six-mile-per-hour trip downhill. The 1920s was the golden era for roller coasters. Large wooden figure-eight tracks were all the rage. Coney Island is a landmark whose amusement park set the stage for all future thrill rides. From camel rides and ostrich races to roller coasters and tilt-a-whirls, millions of people flock to the park seeking excitement. The roller coaster that would measure the success of all future thrill rides, Coney Island Cyclone, featured an 85-foot plunge at an incredible 60-degree angle. Today, the Cyclone is still the industry standard. So you think you've tried it all. You've been dropped, flipped, tossed, and turned. What else could there possibly be in Las Vegas to get your adrenaline pumping? Just ask Craig Fordham, who will gladly take you on his own version of a thrill ride. I have a small company called the Aerobatic Experience, and we offer people aerobatic rides in a world-class aerobatic airplane. We allow people to come out here, get in this airplane, and do loops, rolls, fly inverted, go straight up, straight down. Everything that you see at an air show, you can experience right here. Experienced thrill riders are always seeking new ways to push the envelope. I've tried different roller coasters here, there, and everywhere. And I thought, well, give it a try. It'll be fun. It's the ultimate freedom ride. I mean, we can go up, we can use the whole sky, loop and roll. We can perform an aerial ballet. Nothing holding us down. No one telling us what we can or can't do. It's a good adrenaline rush. Not only will you have the ride of your life at Aerobatic Experience, Craig offers an additional benefit on his flights. Passengers get to see some of the most beautiful scenery west of the Mississippi in a way that they'll never forget. For most people, the most exciting part of the flight is converted flight. While Craig takes you through maneuvers, you'll feel as if you've slipped into a scene from the movie Top Gun. This is very similar to Top Gun. You feel the G-forces on yourself. We do a lot of maneuvers, actually, that can't be done in jet aircraft. Most jet aircraft cannot do negative G maneuvers, and we can. Hopefully, I won't get sick. <laughs> um, but I, I expect to have a great time. I expect to, to do some turns and some flips and some rolls and be upside down and live for a while. Okay, here we go. which is just a little over 200 miles an hour. And if the person has a little experience and is a little adventurous, we'll, we'll make the airplane tumble a few times. Being upside down and looking over Lake Mead is amazing. You don't know how pretty it is until you see it from above and, and all the colors, and it's really wonderful. She did great. I had so much fun. Um, words can't describe it. The, the barrel rolls are great. 
that flippy thing that he did. And, and, and <laughs> kind of felt my stomach do a couple flips itself, but it was great. Anytime you get a chance to have an adrenaline rush or, or you know, feel your stomach in your throat or, or anything like that, it's great. It's, it makes you feel like you're alive. It's the ultimate freedom. We're up there by ourselves just like a bird. Very nice. I can tell you that 99% of the people that come back from these rides are grinning from ear to ear, and they can't wait to go tell their friends. Get in the driver's seat and be the master of your own destiny in the fastest thing on four wheels when Thrill Rides Las Vegas Style returns. Some say that Las Vegas' most authentic thrill ride is not a thrill ride at all. However, getting strapped into the cockpit of a Winston Cup car and driving 160 miles per hour around a banked track is a pretty thrilling experience. We have people coming from all over the world here. A lot of them combine their trip out here and their family vacation with the Richard Cuddy driving experience. I decided to take the Richard Petty driving experience because my whole life I've been a big fan of Richard Petty and racing. I used to have little race cars. And besides that, I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie. The driving experience is exactly what it says. It's geared to be an experience for people that uh, may be NASCAR fans, may not be NASCAR fans, but have always in the back of their minds thought, man, that'd be fun to go out and drive one of those kind of cars. Although most people come for the fun and excitement, Tari is here for very personal reasons. I've come for the driving experience because I own a car, but I've never had a chance to drive it. I would like to race someday as a future driver. I'm into this sport because my dad asked me to continue on with it before he passed away. My dad used to race open-wheeled cars, but unfortunately he didn't get to go into his life as long as we should have with a severe accident and killed him on the track. So for me to do this would be probably an answer to my dad's prayer, to be a driver like he was. I am very excited. Does that look like a race car driver? I'm getting really excited. I, um, in fact, a little while ago, I think my dad was here. Okay, how about you? Any racing background? None whatsoever. I watch a lot of racing. We go through an orientation where we go over what's going to happen with them. We break them up into groups. They go out on the racetrack with our drivers, and the drivers take them for van rides, show them the driving line. We also have an in-car instruction, which familiarizes them with the inner workings of the race car. Buddy here, good. Didn't have to send out the hounds. As the anticipation continues to build, the drivers are given their final set of instructions. All right, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the race cars and the tire. Most of these people have never sat in one of these cars before. They're a little apprehensive. They get in the car, and then they finally get that adrenaline up and start pushing on the accelerator and find out that they can really do what these other guys are out there doing for four, five, six hours you know, on any given Sunday. Adrenaline rush when you get in these cars is, is probably indescribable. You're on such a high when you get out of this car, it, it's just amazing. And I, I don't know how to even put it in words. So, Ned, what's going through your head right now? Oh, I'm pumped. This is probably one of the most exciting things I've done in a long time. this car at 
120, 130, 140 miles an hour was incredible. You could just feel the wheels shaking underneath you, the car, you just hear the boom, boom, boom. I can remember when I was a little tiny girl, he used to take me in the pits with him. And he'd put his helmet on, I couldn't see. He put his gloves on me and they'd be sticking my out. But I'd have my hands on that wheel and I'd think to myself, someday that's gonna be me. Oh, I have the need for speed. <laughs> Most exciting part of the Richard Petty driving experience is, is getting in the car and going and doing the lap, coming back in and just have that big grin and that big smile. I don't know what else is more exciting. With only a rubber band to break your fall, bungee jumping takes you over the edge and hopefully brings you back in one piece. My name is Kristen Edholm. I'm a jump master here at the bungee site. My name's Justin, and I come out to Vegas for a good time bungee jumping. Bungee jumping's like the most natural high you can get. What we do is we offer people the opportunity to come here and, and go beyond their normal limits. There's no chemicals involved. You get on the edge, you jump, and you have a good time, and you do it again and again, and I'm addicted. All right. Here's jump here in Las Vegas is 171 feet. The edge is like the median that decides whether you either jump or you stand. When you either step up to your fears or you just go away, I get to the edge and I look and there's a feeling that I couldn't even put in words. I get off the edge and that's the end of it. having a good time and praying to God that it snaps back. Bungee jumping is incredibly safe. Oh, oh my God! We've never hurt anybody. Oh. We have a whole jump menu you can do, something called a psycho elevator. Hands behind your neck, elbows in, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. The undisputed bungee jump champion of the world, Woo! Justin Young. Doing that was great, man. Woo! It was amazing, amazing. My God, that was ridiculous. It's like being born again almost, if you can imagine. Thrill rides are a huge phenomenon because it gives people a chance to do something they never do before. It pushes them beyond their limits. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> and they just have a good time. Soar 5,000 feet in the air for a thrilling celestial view of the Strip when Thrill Rides Las Vegas style returns. For the Las Vegas tourist in search of adventure, but not completely enamored with being flipped, shaken, and stirred, a Sundance helicopter tour might just be the ticket. This aerial tour is a breathtaking, heart-stopping, thrill-a-minute adventure that gives passengers a view of Las Vegas that is not to be missed. I think what makes rides exciting for people is 
There's things moving by very fast. Uh, perhaps you get in an unusual attitude. Helicopters have a unique thrill that, that you have a better view. And you seem to be just floating a lot of times. Like when you first pick up, I a lot of times like to kind of glance over somebody and I know it's their first ride. And the expression on their face is just amazing. We decided to come to uh, uh, take this trip, a helicopter trip, because you can only see so much from the ground. And I think, how can you see Lake Mead without actually going up in the air? The pictures do not do it justice, and you really have to see it to get the true feeling. The, uh, the beauty is just, you can't capture it on a camera. I've never seen anything quite like it. The lights, the colors are just incredible. When you're flying over the strip, it's like you're floating on a magic carpet. And you'll see perhaps the fountains go off in front of Bellagio. And of course you fly by the Stratosphere Tower, which is kind of exciting. All you're seeing are those beautiful lights. Oh, it's, it's spectacular. If there is any doubt that this is one of the most thrilling rides in all of Las Vegas, how about this view of the Grand Canyon? Many people have seen the canyon from maybe three or 4,000 feet above the rim, or maybe 20,000 feet in an airliner. But to get right at the rim and look into it, I don't think people are prepared for that. People are really moved by the Grand Canyon. Sometimes you see people with tears in their eyes as you break in. Going on holiday to Grand Canyon and not doing a helicopter ride is like having a great Christmas meal without a Christmas turkey. I think people from all over the world have just got to experience it, got to live it. It's fun. <laughs> the future of thrill rides in Las Vegas is as bright as the strip itself. Thrill rides in the future will still be expanding. Over the last 10 years, really basically height and speed is what everybody's been concentrating on. Now innovation, new ideas, new experiences, and new feelings will be combined to, to make it more of an overall experience and, and change what just a standard coaster is. Over the next few years, thrill rides will be incorporated more and more with simulations, with virtual reality. A new ride we're building will put you into headfirst dives and backflips and front flips and flips with a twist. So we haven't yet hit the limit on what we can do with thrill rides. I'm in one of the most exciting businesses, I believe, in the world. We can put fear into your heart and you still want to do it again. The adrenaline rush. Can't believe I just did that. Beat the man! Unbelievable. <laughs> you guys missed out. <laughs> Only in Las Vegas can you have an experience like this. Tracy Gallagher for the Travel Channel at Six Flags Magic Mountain, trying to fit in everything in one day. Ready, set, go. We'll start with some monster coasters, play a few games, mingle with the locals, then we'll ride. I never knew having fun could be so exhausting. And that's nothing, because we're hitting the most extreme rides and thrill parks on the planet. 